You're watching us here on a fresh new episode of Mad About Markets. I'm Mangalam with me as always, Ritu. Hi, Ritu. Hi, Mangalam. It's all about the sauce. It is. Content creators look for saucy details. Magicians look for what secret sauces, etc. And those who animated Kung Fu Panda made. Wander around for that secret sauce. But we're quite literally talking about sauces here, right? And, and I don't mean ketchup. Are. No, we mean both sauces and ketchup. I'll tell you that about that in just a bit. But importantly, India is consuming a lot of sauce. Hmm. That's not just ketchup. Absolutely, and that is must to clarify because when we talk about sauces, we do not mean ketchup alone. Yes, ketchup is a sauce, but not all sauces are ketchup because ketchup is primarily made with tomatoes and everything else is sauces and that's what we discussed today on Mad About Markets. And let's go on with the number crunch, As a always. crunch that you dip into the sauce. How big is the overall market? Let's crunch those numbers for you. In India, the sauces, dressings and condiments market is as big as 21,700 crores as of 2021 and likely to grow almost to 30,000 crore, 29,060 crores by 2026. This data, however, is highly skewed by the presence of salt, pepper and other seasonings included in the condiment and seasoning market. But if you just take a look at the sauces and ketchups market in India, in 2017 it was close to around 2100 odd crores. Now it's as big as half a billion dollars. Of this 3000 3, crores, roughly 60% can be classified as ketchup, which is tomato sauce basically, and 40% of that is the non-tomato sauces. Well, you know what, what happened in the pandemic is, again, we saw consumer preferences and behavior changing. So pre-pandemic, the contribution of non-tomato sauces was just 30%, but it has grown faster during the pandemic now to command almost 40% of the market share. Now, during the pandemic years, newer brands like your Dr. Oetker's Fun Foods, your Viba, Nagin, Wing Greens, you'd have heard of them. They grew by almost 50 to 100% and some on a lower base even saw a tripling of their sales. Now, not only did the new players grow during the pandemic, the quest for home cooking also increased biggies when you had your Unilever and Nestle and Jubilant Foods also expanding their range of offerings in the sauces and condiments business or even venture into newer sauces and condiment categories. Right, so that brings us to uh, putting some questions to the guests that we have today. We have with us Viraj Bell, the founder and managing director of Viba with us. And joining us shortly is Mikhail Rajani, the co-founder of Nagin Sauce as well. Viraj, thank you for joining in. First up, you know, we're trying to size the overall sauces market in India. X of salt and pepper. What is your sense? Most importantly, a big, big, big thank you for someone giving sauces the importance it deserves. I keep saying this, sauce is the biggest unsung hero of the Indian food industry. It is, you know, it is responsible for maximum taste and the lowest. So whenever you have a burger, the sauce changes the taste of the burger, but you only talk about the patty or the bun, but nobody talks about the sauce. So thank you to you for doing this segment on sauces. So if, if to answer your questions, if I had to look at sauces as a, as a category, rightly said, we'll divide it into two. One is ketchup, one is the non-ketchup part. Roughly, roughly, both are similar to uh, each other in size, which is between 2,000 and 2,500 crores is the ketchup. And roughly around the same size. Uh, so if you put ketchup at 23, 2,400 crores, the non-ketchup segment is about 2,000 uh, odd crores in itself. So, you know, ketchup is obviously dominated by the two big boys and the other, other segment... We will also include, you know, mayonnaise, sandwich spreads, salad dressing, and, uh, you know, Chinese sauces. So that is how I would, you know, broadly uh, divide the two segments. All right, uh, roughly 2,000, 2,300, 2,500 crores. But, you know, what has been the trend of the growth in these non-ketchup sauces, especially since the pandemic? Yes, at least definitely in terms of value it is. Even in India, you know, the, the non-ketchup market is growing far more rapidly than the ketchup market. And, you know, uh, the biggest, uh, the reason for that, I mean, though I would love to take all the credit for, you know, because we're launching so many new SKUs, we're launching, I mean, Viva today has more than 90 sauces in the on the retail shelves. But though I would love to take the credit for this, the credit actually lies with the large QSR chains. You know, imagine Burger King has launched so many burgers, um, McDonald's, Burger King, uh, Domino's launches so many pizzas with different, different. So Domino's has a, you know, a, a normal pizza. It also has a tandoori pizza with a tandoori sauce. Uh, you know, Subway has so many sauces. So, And these guys have now opened so many restaurants collectively. 
and also the standalone restaurants. So when customers are going for that, they want the same taste, the same convenience at their house also. So the market, the widening of the market and, you know, credit should be given where it's due. I think that widening of the market has been led by the QSR chain. All right, Viraj, thanks a lot for that. The credit does go to QSRs, but you guys have also made those uh, uh, QSR flavors accessible to us thanks to your sauces. But it's now time to welcome to our studios Mikhail Rajani, who's the co-founder at Nagin Sauce. Uh, Mikhail, a pleasure to have you here. And uh, my Hi, spice sorry. tolerance is here, <laughs> whereas Ritu likes Hi, uh, her things uh, spicy. But importantly, you're a pandemic product, right? What's the kind of growth you saw there during the pandemic? So during the pandemic, we had a lot of people cooking at home. <laughs> so we saw, and a lot of people taking interest of what's sort of in their pantry. So we saw a huge spike in, in sales, uh, particularly online orders at the time. Hmm. Because we had just started off, so we didn't really have many offline channels at the time. But we got huge amounts of uh, user-generated content about how people actually use hot sauce in a variety of ways. Hmm. And uh, yeah, the pandemic... But what made you think was... that hot sauce is the place to be? Because India is the largest consumer and exporter of chilies in the world. And uh, no act, and we already know about jalapenos, habaneros, but nobody knew about labangi mirchis yeah. or sankeshwari chilies. So we felt that uh, there was no brand, brand that sort of aligned itself with that reputation. That's where we felt we needed to make India's first sort of hot sauce. So you're going to remain in the hot sauce category or are you looking to expand your portfolio? So as a big part of our company mission is to highlight Indian chilies. Yeah. And uh, we see ourselves as the spice authority of India. So Authority. Authority. Because authority we've actually right gone, uh, we aspire to be an authority. How yeah. spice authority big are you as compared to the biggies right now? We're small. We're, I would say we're just getting started. So. Okay, just getting started. So that, that sets me up right, uh, rightfully for the next question that I have for Viraj. Viraj, what do you think it will take for a newer player to break into this market? First of all, humble request to all new players considering don't try and come, we don't want the competition. It is a hyper competitive space, Manglam. I mean, there are so many players already there. We are all fighting for the same share of the plate and we are not even the center of the plate, we are the side of the plate. We are all fighting for the you know, same side of the plate and it is hyper competitive. Uh, uh, you know, uh, if I had to give you, let me, let me think of Viva as a newcomer in, in, in the ketchup space. We've just entered the ketchup space. Now, how do we take on the giants already there? So what we have done, as you know, I'm like I'm a I'm a really proud, proud, proud Indian. And what we have done is we said that it cannot take 75 years of you know post-independent India to so we were actually the first Indian company to launch preservative free tomato ketchup in the market. So what we have done is we are saying we will come in via a niche. We will, I mean, we'll price ourselves as per market standards, but we are bringing India's first uh, preservative free tomato ketchup uh, to the market. We brought in, uh, to the best of my knowledge, uh, India's first sugar-free uh, tomato ketchup also. So what we are, so anybody who's wanting to come into the sauce space, if they want to compete with us today, they will have to, I mean, come via innovation. They'll have to do something which we are not doing and that's the only way to enter. What do you think, Mikhail? I mean, do you concur as a new player? Uh, do you need deep pockets? Do you need online presence? Will you not enter the ketchup category which is already dominated by two very large players? What is your strategy on this? So I feel uh, there's a lot of scope for original products. I agree mm. with that. And I think there's a lack of original Indian products in the market. So mm. given that we've actually made Indian flavors that are not like any that are there in the West or in the East. Right. And we've designed products uh, actually for the Indian palate itself. Uh, that's why we think that would give us, that gives us the biggest edge over uh, anyone else in the market. Plus, the sauce market is dominated by cornstarch fructose, which is pretty much what mm -hmm. most of the sauces are made of. Yeah. And Indian consumers are getting very savvy and aware about what Health they're sort of having. As well. And yes, yeah. like Nagin sauce is made with all real, real vegetables, real ingredients. So is India going to be your dominant market or you think you can market these products uh, outside? Since we're the first uh, Indian hot sauce, we want to establish ourselves here as well. But we're in six other countries now. And uh, this is all from interest from their side to actually connect with Indian products. And you say local Indian flavors, etc. It's not all hot. Or are you looking at uh, the hot sauce space itself? 
So we're looking at Indian spices, so not necessarily spicy. Our new product, the 65, is pretty mild, uh, okay. inspired from Tamil Nadu. So all our products are deep-rooted in Indian nostalgia. So something that's familiar to Indians, but mm. like the most advanced version and of it. And is it going to be only sauces? or uh, No, we, we plan to go across a range of products, sauces. We're doing a range of cooking sauces as well coming okay. up. We have condiments. Uh, we have a spice mix range, which is out soon. And uh, some more that I can't name right now. Chutneys right. and pickles. <laughs> Hot sauce is an advanced version of chutney anyway, so it's not, <laughs> right. so, not that far. You know, let, let's talk about the ketchup market in India itself. It's dominated by two large players and a very long tail. Between HUL's Kisan and Nestle's Maggie lies almost 90% of the market. And then you have the others, Kremikas, Vibas of the world. The non-tomato ketchup space, that is the sauces space, again, has two large dominant players. Viva and Fun Foods account for almost 80% of the share. We have Win Greens at about, Win Greens at about 6%. And the others, uh, including Nagin, are at about 13%. But what really stands out over the last few years, Indians have taken to mayonnaise and how. It's a market that is expanded from just about 300 crores in 2017, all the way up to 600 crores during the pandemic. And as we speak, by the end of 2023, it's likely to be all, uh, almost 800 to 850, closer to 900 crore sort of market. So that's tripling in just about five years, Ritu. But you know, Manglam, it's not just an India thing. It's actually a trend that is shaping globally as well because, you know, mayonnaise is the largest chunk of the spice and condiment market with ketchup and other hot sauces occupying the second and the third place mustard far lower at the fourth place. Now, in India itself, despite the stellar growth rate that we've seen, mayonnaise penetration is just 22 which implies a serious headroom for growth. In fact, the most penetrated products are ketchup and chili sauce, almost 65%, followed by packet chutneys, 32%, uh, salad dressing, mayonnaise and dips at about 20%, which implies that there is a massive headroom for growth for all of these. Now, Virash, let me come to you on that note. You know, what is the growth opportunity you see for sauces in India? And is Viva looking to penetrate other categories like we were asking Mikhail as well? I think Viva now with our distribution might of you know more than 650 towns, uh, more than much more than 100,000 uh, outlets where we are available. Uh, so uh, you know today we are not going deeper because we don't have the product range. So tomorrow, hypothetically speaking, if uh, if we let's say launch a, a biscuit, our distribution is already reaching to let's say in your locality if there are 10 shops. We are only giving the Southwest Chipotle to three, three out of those 10 because the other seven can't carry it. It's not that our distribution doesn't reach there. So tomorrow, as we go a bit more mass market, so tomato ketchup is one step in that direction. Um, you know, because now from three out of the 10 shops in your locality, we might be able to go to six out of the 10. So that is how we plan to now increase our distribution and depth in that particular retailer. So yes, in 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 you know, in our story, our aim is to launch, I can't tell you the categories right now, but our aim is to launch uh, two, three new categories over the next three years and, and take Viva deeper. As we're getting scale, now it makes sense to do something which is slightly more, uh, you know, for example, ketchup. It is obviously much more widely accepted than the sauces that we've been doing earlier. So ketchup is the next step. And then after ketchup, the next category will be slightly bigger than ketchup and after that the next category will be slightly bigger than that as well so that is our plan going forward you guys are acting i mean uh, quite elusive both of uh, both michael and uh, viraj are telling us that they're looking at newer categories they're which are bigger which ones are. not telling us which ones maybe we'll have to wait for uh, them to be at our shelves etc or maybe online etc but uh, it has uh, definitely whetted our appetite to know what you guys are doing but at the same time, we have uh, deep-pocketed competitors, uh, Viraj, you know, uh, uh, we, we saw the way uh, Unilever has launched Hellman's Mayo. We have Maggie expanding the range of their sauces. Do you think these guys could topple the apple cart for you guys? Frankly, uh, am I scared about uh, Unilever and Nestle looking at this category? Obviously, I might be lying if I'm not. I mean, they are giants. They are someone I am totally impressed with. Uh, you know, you you grew up uh, listening to stories of the might of Unilever. So obviously it worries me. But will they topple us? I don't think so. I think what will happen is they'll considerably, I mean, look at me. I'm talking about being in a couple of hundred thousand stores as a big thing. I mean, Unilever would laugh at that, right? So when Unilever comes into this space, they will market it. They will, you know, kind of increase the distribution. 
so i think it will be genuinely and i'm not saying this to sound cool on on cnbc but it will be genuinely good for the market if some of these big boys come and i hope that they spend some of that big boy money on these categories because you know our our marketing campaigns do we are on tv do we have done a lot of marketing but they will never be able to match a, a nestle or a, or a unilever so you know i i welcome them i mean marico has recently come into the segment um unilever as you said has come into this segment if i did not know about nestle but even if nestle is coming i think it's great for the the, the segment and and i think um, i mean i welcome them and frankly i'll probably we learn from them a bit and you know and uh, and uh, as they say see you at the movies so see you in the retail market it's going to be fun Mikhail, I heard you saying you can t- <laughs> topple some no, of the players in the market, huh? No, not that. I said I'm not. We're not afraid of uh, anyone coming, but and we, as a smaller company, we're nimble. We can do much more things that larger corporations can't do. And still, you know, what yeah. is the end game? How do you achieve scale and size as a newer player in the market when you're competing with these deep-pocketed, large, established players with their network, with their chains? Do you think the larger end goal is it for companies like you to be acquired to achieve that scale, not, or look at other opportunities? Not necessarily. Uh, I feel we get to take advantage of the internet and its exponential growth today that like uh, legacy companies can't do that yeah. because of their distribution network that already exists hmm. and they can't discount below, below a certain no, but price. But what they can so. do actually is look at your brand as a proof of concept, proof yeah. of success and, and use their might. look that yeah. and use their distribution might to scale it. They could, but it's hard to create original good products. But it's easier to buy with their deep pockets. If we were selling, <laughs> if you were selling, okay. So you're not here to sell. We're not here to sell. We're here to build a big brand and and to be India's largest and probably one of the world's largest hot sauce brands. Well, so more power to you. But sales channel again. Uh, are you focused heavily on online, or do you think we'll? uh you know see a good mix between physical and online presence so we've stayed away from unorganized offline but there's yeah. a huge growth in organized retail offline so mm. as modern trade grows we're seeing massive growth in modern trade uh as a brand it's easy for us today there's mm. a lot of infrastructure that exists mm. because of e-commerce the d2c environment as well mm. as organized retail so things that didn't exist for a lot of companies you know 10 20 years ago so through a pandemic where already But, in hundreds of stores various geographies across the country you know it's, it's difficult to do that being just a food and grocery sort of player primarily because the gross margins are not as high as beauty and personal care so does it make unit economic sense for you are you guys a bit positive uh, on a per unit basis yeah absolutely and we, what are the gross margins you work with we have high gross margins we're over 80% gross margins okay. on our okay. product because we're indigenous products so we don't actually get anything from outside all locally sourced so given that there are global hmm. uh, supply, supply chain, chain issues, issues we wouldn't face those given and that all our products are indigenous quickly before we get into a break i just wanted to know uh, why what got abhishek bachan to invest in you good product <laughs> it is a product it's once you try it you'll know uh, there are a lot of people not just him who wanted to sort of get involved with the product after tasting it hmm. so he liked what we were doing where india first company uh making original products out what of what does he bring apart from the money a lot he's a, he's one of the largest bollywood celebrities in the country he's big into sports we've always marketed nagin sauce as a product for people of passion mm. and uh because of his kabaddi teams and his football teams he he's a true advocate of that and so. the family seems to be a fan of nagin sauce yes. as well yes we're <laughs> quite blessed that, that that was the case as well All yeah. right uh on that note we actually have to take a very short break but don't go anywhere because up next we're going to talk about the millennial opportunity that lies ahead for the sauce and ketchup industry. We also focus on the yays and the mays and more importantly the bigger question is it time for the other sauces to catch up with ketchup. Welcome back you're watching Mad About Markets and today we're talking about the opportunity in the sauces and condiment space more specifically sauces and not ketchup alone because ketchup that seems like a product for the older generation right so the penetration for ketchup as per mintel is the highest for those that are between the age of 45 to 54 years old it is the young who we focus on here at Mad About Markets who are having other sauces and not just ketchup it is also a space which has seen sporadic but significant deal activity in the last few years so in december of 2008 you had Dr Otkar buying fun foods for 110 crores now you cut to June 2016 and you had Kremica raising 101 crores from Rabo Equity Advisors 
Three years later, in October of 2019, you had Viba raising $14 million in Series D funding from DSG Consumer Partners. And post-pandemic in November 2021, you saw Wing Greens raising 124 crores from Invest Corp. And the most recent deal, that was in August of this year itself, where Nagin raised about $1 million from Abhishek Bachchan, h and and other investors. Since we have Nagin here, how easy or hard has it become to raise money from investors for the industry, especially given the macroeconomic environment that we are in, where money is not really easy or cheap anymore? So it's it's a good time to be a founder, I would say. There's a lot of dry capital, dry yeah. powder in, in, with VCs lying there right now to build businesses. Mm. However, they're very particular about the type of businesses they invest in. So yes. you have to have good uh, a good founding team, solid unit economics on your product and a good path to profitability. Mm. Uh, but if anyone sort of checks that box and, and is willing to do, do the work, it's a fantastic ecosystem now in the startup space in India. And I think anyone with a good uh, business and, and a vision can mm. make that reality come true. And that brings us to what are uh, the triggers working for uh, the sauces industry, the yays and mays as we usually talk about. It's my time for the yays as always. Uh, the biggest one is globalization. Everyone's traveled and everyone wants global flavors on their plates here itself. And people are willing to experiment as well. And the biggest uh, example of that was when people wanted to uh, look for newer flavors during the pandemic itself. The third one, uh, sauces are now a growing preference for people primarily because they want to buy, uh, buy it from uh, you know uh, other brands which are available in the market as against making pickles, chutneys, etc. at home itself. Availability via D2C and modern trade channels have been a big driver for growth as well. You can get whatever sauce you want at uh, uh, you know uh, the click of a button on your phone itself. And new local niches, me sitting here in Mumbai can get access to Ujjalokya sauce from the northeast of the country thanks to players like Nagin and others who are there in the markets which are making people aware of newer local niches and they are catering to those niches. So there are a fair amount of triggers for growth, Ritu. There are, but let me flip the tables, all right? Because there is a very, this is a very competitive industry. You know, you you have newer players entering by the day. And like he said, there is dry powder for those with good business sense. So that is a competitive space. Uh, the need for distribution beyond D2C. A lot of new players, especially that came up during the pandemic, have utilized the D2C channel. But then to achieve scale, you have to look beyond as well. The lack of scale in niches, because every few kilometers in India, the taste and preferences change in how. So that is another challenge for them to contend with then consumers also prefer local brands because this remains a highly unorganized market. You still go to your Kurana stores or your mother's making your pickles. You don't really necessarily always buy them outside. And then, of course, you have the health factor, which is influencing sauce purchases. I, for instance, would not want to uh, you know, buy mayonnaise. Maybe I'd use uh, newer dips and hunker. So all of these are challenges that companies have to contend with. And that brings us to the bigger question then. Uh, is it time for other sauces to catch up with ketchup? Viraj, go ahead. Other sauces have to catch up with ketchup. I think Muni's will be the the the, the first uh, product uh, to catch up with ketchup. And also, in terms of value, you have to understand it will catch up with ketchup uh, in value much before volume. Muni's is much more expensive than ketchup, so it will uh, you know it'll get to ketchup before uh, in in value before it gets to ketchup in uh, volume. And then I think the other trend that we're seeing rapidly is chili sauces. Uh, chili sauces, like, you know, our, our uh, stable of chili sauces, uh, you know, Bhujalakya chili sauce, Sirasha, Piri Piri, that is the next big category that we're seeing out of nowhere, Manglam. I mean, frankly, two years, two and a half years back, it was a non-category. You know, only the, the typical Chinese green chili and red chili sauce are categories. But now, chili sauce itself has become a humongous category. So I would say that is the next category to, you know, uh, kind of it'll catch up with ketchup after after mayonnaise. So the two big categories for me to look out for in the sauce space is, um, is you know, mayonnaise and, and the chili sauces. All right, so ketchup and chili sauces, those seem to be the dominant categories, but given the opportunities and the challenges we spoke about, what do you see is the growth potential? Can sauces actually catch up to the ketchup market in India? I, I think it can, given that uh, people are very aware about the type, ingredients they eat now. So mm. ketchup, as I said, was cornstarch fructose, and people are moving away mm. from that 
in general. And also given that there are several uh, industries that are growing si parallel to hot sauce. Hmm. So you look at craft beer, for example, hmm. which is also sort of blooming in a big way in India. Beer and hot sauce are, are a marriage sort of made in heaven yeah. and also ready to eat uh, food, which is like, especially mm. you see the rise of ready to eat idli and dosa. Yeah. But it's hard to make a chutney at home, yes. but it's easy to have it with a really good hot sauce. But so. you know, uh, the question I think he's given us a hint about what he's coming Chutneys. up with next, right? <laughs> no, I <wish>. Or beer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, but you know, he said that he's seeing, uh, Virat said that he's seeing a massive trend in the growth of chili as well as mayonnaise. Can we expect a nagin flavored mayonnaise come by? Yeah, absolutely. We've and been working, people already are pairing our products with mayonnaise very well because and, it hmm. sort of tempers the heat. So, yeah. Absolutely. But are you getting like co branding opportunities, yes. etc.? Yes, we've co branded with a cheese company. There's a, a nagin flavored a vegan cheese in the market. Hmm. We've co, uh, co branded with a company called Wonder Foods recently, which makes a tomb. Which is so we've uh, now get, it's called Tomb, yeah, okay. uh, Middle Eastern dip, which uh, we've okay. sort of lended our flavor to, and many more in the pipeline that we're sort of working on. So how big can you be? It can be huge. <laughs> There's no sky's the limit because. The size of the because, ketchup industry. Uh, that's about eighteen hundred crores in India, yeah. if, hmm. uh, give or take. Uh, give or take about two thousand, and and Correct. sources could in the next five years say. I would say we could be halfway there. Mikhail, thank you so much for uh, joining in and giving us a sneak peek into what you're going My to pleasure. do. But importantly, you know, uh, whetting our appetite for some chips and dip right away with let's the hot nagging sauce that you're talking about. Dip into about. some hot sauce. Alright, right, let's do that. Let's On see. that note, uh, we so wrap we'll up. We'll catch a break, but we'll see you next time, same time.